This video will show you how to use the Dataset Scraper plugin. First, you need to have a copy of Dataset installed. So install that using your uh, distributions package manager system. And installed, you need to install the Dataset Scraper plugin. You can use this with the Dataset install command. And lastly, the scraper requires a database in which to put its data. So we're gonna go and create a database. We'll call it the test database. And we can see we've created it there. And you need to explicitly tell us that you have enabled the scraper plugin. This is because we're gonna put the database into write ahead logging mode, which might be unexpected for people. And so it's an opt-in thing. To indicate that you want it to be enabled, put an entry in your metadata.json file and for each database in which you want to install the scraper, have a plugins key that says dataset scraper. If you have that, you're almost good to go. You just need to invoke dataset with the appropriate configuration options. So dataset dash dash metadata, metadata.json, test.db. That launches and now we'll be able to load dataset. And we can see our test database here and it has some tables. So I'm gonna click into it. To configure our first uh, crawl, go to the DSS crawl table. And at the bottom, you'll see there's now an add crawl button, which is not normally found on these table pages. When you click it, you get to a screen where you can configure your crawl. Uh, I'm gonna do a crawl of my many years old personal blog. So I'll tell it to start from the homepage. And by default, it tries to have sensible rules. So it'll follow links that it discovers through sitemaps, as well as links that it discovers uh, on the page in A tags. For the purposes of a demo, I actually don't want this second feature because it'll discover things like deep links to comments and just a lot of sort of garbage that I don't actually want. So I'm gonna remove that rule for now. Everything else tries to have a reasonable default. Uh, we'll cache pages for up to seven days. And uh, we can also extract some very basic SEO information about links. So I'm going to say, let's extract information about links into the test database in the links table. And click Add Crawl. We get redirected back to this row in the, in the crawl table. And again, this is a customized page. It's not what most row, table, most row pages look like. So we can see the configuration. And we can start a job. So we started the job. And then the first step is it's going to go and discover where to start. That's going to be the, the home page. And then it's going to start crawling things and, and uh, discovering links. We can monitor its progress uh, just by looking at tables in uh, SQLite. So if I click on job number one here, it takes us to the entry in the job table. And you can see that there are some other related tables. So the uh, crawl queue tells us which URLs are still pending and when they were discovered to be crawled. The job stats table gives us a summary of for each host that we've discovered pages that we have to crawl, how many pages have we crawled, uh, how many were successful, how many were redirects, how many were 404s or, or similar, and how many were 500 errors. And you can click to drill into these so we can see we tried to crawl a sitemap page that didn't exist. Maybe more interestingly, we can see pages we did succeed on. So we have like the home page, some site maps, and we're starting to see some posts. It's coming along pretty slowly because by default, we try to be respectful of the server. Uh, in the particular case uh, for this demo, I know this is a relatively small site and I know that it's hosted on Blogspot, which can handle a much higher rate of crawl. So I'm gonna just turn the throttle up quite a bit here rather than waiting 10 seconds between each page, we'll wait only hundred milliseconds. And now if we go back here, uh, let's go to the crawl queue. We should be able to see a whole bunch of things just starting to come in now. So we can see it's really rapidly on. If we go to that job stats again, we can see it's taking along quite nicely. And in fact, I think it's probably finished now. So when we drill into that crawl, yes, nothing's currently running. 
Uh, by default, we're caching things. So if I were just to run this again, uh, it would actually very quickly just complete because it doesn't have to talk to the origin server. And if I go and look at the last few runs here, you can see the first time we ran it, it took a couple minutes, but then the subsequent times it ran very quickly in basically less than a second. Because we have caching enabled, um, we've actually stored the files that we've retrieved uh, in the SQLite database. So in here, I can actually scroll over. So this file was 17 kilobytes from the origin. If I go and look at our stored copy of it, uh, it's only taking up six kilobytes of space. This is because we're using a uh, Z standard compression uh, library to compress everything. By default, Z standard has a pretty reasonable general purpose performance. In the particular case of web crawling, we can actually improve it. And we can improve it through a feature called dictionaries. These dictionaries will get created automatically for you when you restart dataset. If you don't want to restart it, you can come to the DSS Z standard dict table and click create dictionary. That will unqueue a, a task to discover sites for which we can build dictionaries. Then it will build the dictionary based on the data we've seen, and it will recompress uh, all of the data for that site. So you can see now that there is a, an entry for my uh, blog as a small dictionary, only 22 kilobytes of size. If we go back to the stored compressed file, it used to be six kilobytes, and now it's only two kilobytes, which is pretty nice. Uh, one other thing that we can show is crawling is great, but usually you want to actually do something with the data that you've crawled. And so we can drill into the extract stats. So you can have a hook that will run when uh, a page is crawled, and that hook can return a Python object that says sort of some data to be inserted into SQLite. So the first time we ran it, it inserted 12,000 rows, and then on the subsequent runs, it inserted uh, rows that were basically no ops, just reinserting the same data, but not actually creating new data. So we see it uh, says inserted zero and updated 12,000. And we can drill into the actual data that was inserted. We can facet it by do follow. So this is some brief SEO stuff that says links from page, uh, from page and to page, um, what the anchor text was and whether the link was, uh, whether it passes link juice. So I imagine the ones that have do follow equals zero, that's probably all gonna be like comment spam. And yeah, I would say it probably is. Uh, outsourcing through Rent-A-Coder and DVID fiber optic cable extender, that all looks like spam. You can customize the extraction yourself if you want through plugins. So I have over here a plugin folder. And in that folder, there's a file uh, sizes.py, which implements the extract from response hook. So this receives the URL that we're uh, processing and an object that says uh, the contents of the file, the contents of the URL, and when we fetched it. It can also receive information about the crawl, so you can specify the config and you can parameterize what you do here. For the purposes of a demo, I'm just gonna always return, uh, always run this processing. And what we're gonna do is return rows for the sum table table. And every row will have a URL, which will be the primary key, which is what this exclamation mark uh, means, and we'll say how large the contents of that URL were. So in order for this to be active and to be used, we need to tell dataset that we have a plugins directory. And this is kind of me cheating. I'm piggybacking on dataset's plugin directory. It works. It might have to change in the future. So we'll start it up and we will run that crawl again. And again, the crawl completes very quickly. If we go and look at the stats for it, we see now there's two rows here. So we have the link data that we extracted and then our new plugin extracted all the URLs and how big they were.